Let's take a look at a new feature in regards to layered images in Dash Studio 4.21. And also, let's take a brief look at how LIEs actually work. Hello everyone, I'm Jay and on this channel we're helping you become better 3D artists with Das Studio. Today I want to talk about LIEs, the Layered Image Editor, and more specifically a new feature that's been introduced in Das Studio 4.21 that handles how LIEs are processed under the hood in Das Studio. In fact, let me start with that before I talk about how LIEs work. So the new feature is over here under Edit, Preferences, and then under Interface, you'll find it at the bottom of the dialog here under the miscellaneous section. It says Layered Textures, and you have a slider now that you can set between compression and speed and size. Now, those of you who know how LIEs work, they will appreciate what this might mean. For those of you who don't, let me quickly explain how LIEs are handled under the hood. LIEs are essentially textures that can be applied on our object surfaces. Here I have a basic sphere that I've made in Blender. And if I head over here to my Materials tab or my Surfaces tab, I have one material that's called Apni called Material. And under Base, I've applied a single texture. And it looks a bit like a mouth. But if I go here and apply maybe another one, maybe Eyes, then you know I can change this to Eyes. And now I've got Eyes on it, but my mouth is gone. So if I don't want to use Use an image editor to combine those, Das Studio has an option to do this for me, and that is the layered image editor. It comes up literally by hovering over any of these squares and then applying a texture, but rather than browsing to the texture or using the image editor, we can use the layered image editor here. So if I select that, a dialog comes up that lets me preview what my current texture looks like, but I also have options that let me make changes to either this texture or layer other textures on top of this. So in my case, I have the eyes here, but if I click this little plus icon on the bottom here, I can add something else. For example, another image layer. So let me do that and browse to my mouth texture open that, and then I have the mouth. Sadly, the mouth is now above the eyes, and the eyes have transparency, the mouth does not. So I can just go and grab my mouth and drag it below my eyes. So just left click and drag, and then drop it, and then now the eyes are on top of that. So now I have two images layered on top of one another, eyes and mouth, and if I hit accept down here, then Das Studio is going to apply both these textures to my object or so it seems. So really what's happening there under the hood is that if I look closely at my file name that is now applied, if I just hover over the texture here, that isn't either my eyes texture or my mouth texture. That is a new file that Das Studio has generated under the hood in a temporary directory. You can see the full path here, app data, roaming, and then it's in a temp directory and it's called 106 underscore eyes.png. So that's neither of my files. So really what Das Studio has done, it's loaded both files into memory, combined them, saved them out, and then swapped out the texture. We didn't really see that that was a speed problem because my textures are only 1K and they're really not that large, but you can imagine how this can add up. If you had an LIE that is made out of 4K textures and it's like seven layers that all need to be loaded in, combined, saved out and reapplied, maybe on multiple parts of your body, that can take quite some time. And this is where this new improvement may come in handy that I've just shown you under Edit Preferences Interface. Traditionally, this slider was set to the left. So when all images are loaded and then saved out again, Das Studio would add some compression to that so that the file size of the image on your hard drive remains smaller. But since we now have extremely fast CPUs and we usually have hard drives that are now M2 drives or SSDs, they're much, much faster than they used to be. So by removing the file compression in this process, there's less computational power to make that happen needed. So that's a little bit of time saving there. But also file size doesn't really matter so much with fast drives. So we can get by with fast drives. And therefore, if we set this to the right, our images may be loaded faster when we apply LIEs. And this is something that we hadn't seen before. So I do recommend that if you do work with LIEs for tattoos or makeups or scars or all those types of things, have a play with this and see what 
setting of the slider gives the fastest results on your system. So it is very much system dependent on what yields the best results here. Multi-threading, leave that on unless you have issues. Multi-threading means that if your computer has multiple cores available, all of those can be used to combine the images rather than only a single core. So if you have issues, disable that. If not, do leave it on and play with the position of the slider. Do, to do some tests and uh, take a stopwatch and see what applies your LIEs the fastest. So I'm going to leave it here on the right-hand side on size, and that yields the best results on my system here. A few other things I can show you about the layered image editor. This is also available in the regular image editor. The changes that we can make with it, because it's kind of cool to see this on a really simple image like this. If I go back here to my layered image editor, that's where all these bits and pieces are. Imagine I want my eyes to look a little bit different. I could go and change the position of the eyes the X position and the Y position, but I can also change the scale a little bit. So if you ever have textures that, you know, need a bit of adjustment, you can do some stuff directly inside Death Studio. So if I wanted to make the eyes a little bit narrower, maybe I'll go and take down the X scale like so. Now they go over to the left too much, so I can go and move the X position and put them back here. Perhaps also on my mouth, I want that to be slightly further down so that the lips don't intersect with the eyes here. So that would be the Y position. Turn that down a little. And perhaps I'm going to put the eyes slightly further up. How about that? So maybe the Y position of the eyes, just put that up a little bit like so. Hit accept and boom. So I have a slightly different facial expression there and I haven't really changed any textures in an external application. Let me go and do this again here under layered image editor. And I'm going to go and make maybe the mouth a little bit wider. Let me do that. So mouth and I'll go and X scale like so. And then also X position further over here. Let's see what my funny little sphere man looks like now. There we go. It's got a very broad smile. Look at that. Fantastic. So another thing that you can do is use colors. Just do really basic color correction. And if you're familiar with the blending modes of layers in Photoshop, this is something you can do here. So once again, head over to the layered image editor. And now we're going to go and apply, maybe just as a top layer here, we're going to go and add a color layer to it that has full opacity. So it's going to, going to be completely white. Maybe I'll go and turn this into something, I don't know, maybe yellow for now. And now if I disable this, I can see my textures, but I can't see my color effect. If I enable that, it just kind of drowns out everything else. So we can change the blending mode, which is here, the blend mode. Source over is literally what Photoshop would call normal, but you can do something like multiply down here. So see that on the list there, long list, multiply. And then we can see that the light values are added to the other light values here. You also have an opacity slider that you can turn down so that increases or decreases how much that top layer is being blended in. So if I'm going to do this maybe by 50%, then we get a little, or maybe like 70, 80%. Then we get some yellow eyes here. Hit accept, and then Dash Studio applies that. If I'm not happy with that, I can go and maybe change that to blue, for example. Just messing around, really. Blue, there we go. Blue eyes, much, much better. Maybe that's too much. Turn down the opacity a little bit, so we get a little bit of a blue tinge there. So it's good for minimal color correction. So add a color layer and then turn the blend mode here to multiply and play around with many of the other things here. This is very similar to what Photoshop or other image editing programs have to offer. So some of them you won't actually see an effect, but others might yield some really cool results here, like, you know, soft light, hard light, that sort of thing. You can also apply masks here, either color masks or image masks. If you wanted to get rid of certain items that are part of a texture, you can just go and paint over them and kind of get rid of that. But Das Studio doesn't really offer an option to do that internally. You can apply a mask onto it, but you can't really paint the mask yourself as far as I know. But play around with this is kind of an interesting little feature. And yes, with Das Studio 4.21, we've got this new way of how LIEs are handled under the hood in Das Studio. And I wanted to give you this as a little introduction because in the next episode, we're going to talk more about another LIE product that applies makeups to your Genesis 9 figures. Stay tuned for that.